Good morning, I'm Bruce Austin. I'm the Vice Chairman of NASDAQ and President of the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. We are very proud today to have with us Tom Riley, the CEO of Cloudera. Thanks for being here, Tom. Bruce, my pleasure to be here, excited. It's great to see you, and congratulations. You know, Cloudera has been named a CNBC Disruptor 50 company for 2016, which is very exciting, so congratulations to you Thank and the team. You. So what is the opportunity for Cloudera, or you know, what is the industry that you guys are disrupting today? Well, we have a tremendous opportunity to have us. We're disrupting one of the last enterprise software markets to be disrupted. The database and analytics market today is a $60 billion annual spend. And that's the market we are disrupting. But here's what's exciting. That market is growing to nearly $120 billion by 2020. What $60 billion market is growing like that? And the reason it's growing is data is exploding because of the newly interconnected world. We now have all these mobile users, connected cars, connected homes, connected athletes, connected patients, connected supply chains. And there's this explosion of data that does not fit in the traditional tools. And we, with an open source community called the Apache Hadoop community, have built a new solution, a completely different approach to collecting this new set of data and then to analyze it. Wow, that's, that's exciting. Sounds like a, a, that's what a disruptor is. is. Is that your definition? Disruptor is just taking an opportunity of a big space or, or what would you say a disruptor is? Well, I think a disruptor is taking an innovative approach to a traditional problem. And here, we're not only disrupting, but we're transforming. We're taking a completely different approach to how you look at data and how you analyze it. Traditionally, we thought of, of analyzing data through reports and analytics. We're applying machine learning and we're at the forefront of artificial intelligence, new compute intensive capabilities to understand vast amounts of data sets and find patterns or anomalies. And this allows our customers to service their customers better, understand whether they're happy or sad, to predict what they need, to optimize their supply chains, to reduce fraud, even to solve some of the world's greatest healthcare issues. Wow, yeah, machine learning and AI are, are definitely hot, hot topics right now, so that's, that's very exciting. So you know, you've been CEO for three years. What has the company been able to accomplish in those last three years? Well, what I'm most proud of is what our customers have been able to accomplish. So we're working with some of the most advanced uh, healthcare organizations to solve cancer and doing genomic research. Yep. We're working with uh, intelligence communities doing counterterrorism or cybersecurity. We work with financial institutions to reduce fraud or identify anti-money laundering. We work with nonprofit organizations, one nonprofit organization called the Thorne Institute that's using our technology to look at online ads and identify children that are being sold into sex trafficking. Wow. Wow. So it's the use cases that are, are really, really empowering. It's not what we've done, it's what our customers are doing with this new platform that combines machine learning, uh, vast data sets we haven't had access to before, and, and getting insights that, that are just uh, really impactful. Sounds like you're really excited. So now, Tom, you've had an astounding career you know, before, uh, before you joined Cloudera. You've joined high growth companies and really helped them excel. You've taken companies through an IPO before and acquisitions. What skills do you think are needed for these later stage companies that you have that you can bring to Cloudera? Yeah, I've been very fortunate. This is the third time I've been hired in as a CEO, kind of at a later stage, to scale the businesses. And I, I respect the founders who are the true innovators, especially at Cloudera. But what I try to do is help the company find the right balance between long-term strategic planning and tactical operations. Right. You need to always be planning for the long run, where you want to take the business, but executing in, in the near time. It's all about execution. Yeah. So it's finding that right balance uh, then it is about alignment. Uh, we're an organization that we've surpassed 1,000 employees. We hire two new employees every day. Wow. And so how do you keep an organization aligned towards your key priorities? And so we spend a lot of time around alignment and making sure everyone's putting the wood behind the single arrows. And that also is very important. And then finally, I believe it's the leader's job to make sure that the culture of a company is retained and it has an identity and it has a soul. And that emanates from your founders but the role of the CEO is to protect it and to, to nurture that culture. That's, uh, that's great. So you did, you did mention that, you know, Cloudera's co-founders are still, a lot of them at the company and they're still uh, you know, really developing that culture. Uh, what's it been like to really work with the founders and really maintain that culture as you grow? Yeah, what I've, I've learned, this is my third time coming and hiring as a CEO, and I've learned some mistakes in the things right to do. First off, one of the mistakes is even though you have the title of CEO, does not mean it's your company and it's your identity and it's your culture you set. Right. I think the CEO is just one of many jobs in the company. It's a unique one, but the company belongs to the founders. 
the companies, the founders are the ones that have the soul and the passion and the vision. And so what I try to do is retain them as it's their company, they're in leadership positions, and I'm actually an operator right. helping them get to their vision. Right. And that's a technique I've applied and it seems to, seems to work well. Well, that sounds, sounds like it's working very well for you. That's great. So we do talk a lot about leadership here at the center, the Entrepreneurial Center. We know that you know, great leaders build great companies. What would you describe as your leadership style? And more importantly, what would your team say about your leadership style? Well, it's always, always hard. You always wonder what your team would say. <laughs> um, here's what I try to be. I try to be open. I try to be very transparent. I try to be fair. Uh, and I try to um, build consensus, but being decisive at the same time. So you don't want to be authoritarian, but a lot of times the organization needs you to make a decision. So you can't let decisions go on too long. Now, it all kind of comes together. If you have a good strategy, and I don't need to own the strategy, I just need to make sure we have a strategy. Right. If it's well understood and everyone's aligned behind it, and you know how to measure your progress against it, quite frankly, you can put yourself out of decision making and the organization can make a lot of decisions because everyone has clarity where you're headed. So that's what I try to do is make sure we're aligned, we all understand that common vision, that uh, we're open about it, we are honest about when we're, we're falling off our targets, and, and I think that's what makes a, a great leader and a great organization. Sounds like you empower your people, so that's, that's, that's important, that's great. So you studied mechanical engineering at Cal, and since you spent 30 years in enterprise software, how did your career evolve to enterprise software from mechanical engineering? Well, it's uh, in some respects a bit of an embarrassing story. Um, I, I graduated as a mechanical engineer. I went to work for IBM as a mechanical engineer. Um, and uh, I, I was not that challenged socially in that job. <laughs> um, I found myself sitting at a drafting table eight to 10 hours a day. Uh, and I wanted to build some social skills. So I switched to become a salesperson for IBM, which I was an introvert at the time. So I had to work right. to build extrovert skills. Uh, but it was in that when I became a salesperson that that led me to this path because I suddenly could talk to different industries. I learned how to work with executives um, and I, it kind of broadened my horizons. Yet having an engineering background in a technical field has always helped me feel comfortable working with engineers. Work with engineers, yeah, you can speak their language. It's great. So thousands of companies today are using Cloudera software globally. Um, you gave me some examples. Give me a few more examples of how Cloudera solutions are really enabling these large enterprises to manage their big data. Yeah, so this all goes back to, there's all this new data that's out there because this world's become interconnected. So there's three categories of use cases that our customers are, are doing. The first is what we call customer insights. Can you learn more about your customer or their household or their social network so that you can offer them better products, right. uh, service them better, retain them better. Very common use case in retail. So even online, when you see that, that, that ad following you from website to website, right, right. And you're like, how do they know I want a golf club? Right. That's our software in the background, building a profile about you and targeting you. Um, it's using banks so across multi-channel. Or the telecom companies. We're working with nine of the 10 top telecom companies to do what they call reducing customer churn. The other category are uh, what's called Internet of Things. This is where manufacturers are censoring their whatever they manufacture and they're monitoring how it's being used. So we're working on the connected car, the connected home, the connected patient, and, and we work with like big auto manufacturers or truck manufacturers. One of our truck manufacturer customers has reduced through preventive maintenance the cost of operating a truck from 15 cents a mile to three cents a mile because they're monitoring that truck and they're delivering it to maintenance a lot quicker before it breaks. Right. So these are impactful use cases. Right. And then the third category, Bruce, is a very exciting one. We call it lowering business risk. Our platform today is being used for cybersecurity by the most advanced cybersecurity organizations around the world because they know that they need to do anomaly detection. They have to find these little signals on their vast amounts of data of bad activity. Right. And this is where machine learning, our work with machine learning right. comes into place. Or we're used for any money laundering or for fraud. So when you use your credit card and they call you up and say, hey, are you really in Mexico doing this? You haven't traveled to Mexico. That's likely our software in the background saying this is an anomalous activity for Bruce. He's never traveled here or bought this. Right, right, that's great. These are all huge categories as you mentioned earlier. A great big market for you guys to expand into. So that was exciting. Um, you do have a new partnership with a great NASDAQ company. They just celebrated 45 years listing on NASDAQ Intel. So can you tell us about that partnership and um, what we see is that, that opportunity 
with Intel. Intel is an amazing, iconic company. Not only looking past for 40 plus years, but looking for the next 40 years. Talk about strategic planning. Intel has a 10 year plan and a real 10 year plan. Right. And one of the things in their 10 year plan that they, they understand and they can extrapolate is that data management analytics will become the number one application driving server purchases in data centers around the world. Right, right. So the world is becoming information centric. That led to them investing $740 million wow. in our business. Wow. But we now maintain a joint roadmap where our software engineers work with their hardware engineers to design the chips of the future to be optimized for these analytic workloads. Right. That is a benefit to our customers. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, they're a great company. We, um, we just had them here recently at the Entrepreneurial Center as well, so that, that's, that's amazing. So, um, Tom, we do like to give advice to these young entrepreneurs that may be listening in today. So what early advice would you give to someone who's starting a company? Um, what kind of uh, direction would you give them? Well, so I'm not the early innovator and starter. I'm right. the operator. Right. But here's what I have seen in uh, lots of young companies. When you have a vision, you have to per persevere and stick to that vision. All the same while, being agile enough to listen to the market and adjust. Because your initial vision is not always going to be a perfect fit to the market, but if you're a true innovator, there is validity in that vision. So you need to stick to it, but adjust and listen to customers and then fit. But once you find that market fit, stay focused on it. Because one of the challenges with software is software can do anything. And right. you're going to have customers and partners and investors wanting to pull you in many ways. And if you can put more wood behind a single arrow, even though it's a narrow market initially, that's how you get traction, then you'll expand from there. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's great advice. And I think also the fact that maybe <laughs> if they're not a good operator, hire a good operator like yourself. Make sure they get somebody that can, can handle that if they're not, not uh, that's one of their strengths. So a um, so <clears throat> couple of last questions. What's the worst advice you received as a CEO? Um, worst advice, hire the best talent. Now that may That's sound, worst, but <laughs> that may sound um, like really good advice, yeah. but when you hear hire the best talent, especially when you're being brought into a company, what that implies is the talent that there is not good enough. I believe in building the best talent. Everyone has great, great skills and capabilities, and I think it's the CEO's job to bring the best talent out of their company and to, to take, it as, take that talent as far as they can. Now, that flips also to great advice, because when you do have to make a change, then it is a CEO's job to go get the best talent. Right. And the last thing you want to do is rush recruiting an executive team. You need to take your time. You need to really, really vet it out. Uh, the most recent hire, I don't mind sharing, I brought on a chief marketing officer recently. Um, he provided me with four reference checks I did 16 back channel wow. references yeah. in addition to his four. So nearly 20 references before like saying, okay, this is the right person for our team. Right, that's great, that's great advice. Um, I think the audience would love to know a little bit, we know a lot about Cloudera today, but let's hear a little bit about, about Tom. What do you like to do for fun? <laughs> I wish I had more time for fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm fortunate to live here in the San Francisco <laughs> Bay Area. Uh, my wife and I and our son, our six-year-old son, we spent a lot of time on the Bay. So we are big boaters on the bay. Uh, if we're not on our boat in the bay, we're up in Tahoe on the lake uh, up there. Uh, and we enjoy all seasons there. Uh, my passion I want to get back to, I used to spend time in the water as a kite surfer, but uh, Caudera and a six-year-old have kind of imposed on that a bit. <laughs> but uh, I'll find my way back there eventually. Back to kite surfing, that's great. Okay, one last question, Tom, then. Um, so we fast forward 10 years from now, where would you like to see Caudera? I think Caudera is going to be one of the top five or six software companies. Uh, and that is our long-term strategy and how we think long-term and position for that. And then of course we have to make sure that tactically we're doing the right things today to get there. But uh, there's few companies that can go after a $100 billion market opportunity. There are few uh, companies that can do it with a small set of competitors. Uh, and there's some complexities why we have a small set of competitors. Um, but today we, we are selling to the global 2000, right? We're going after the largest of companies. We work with eight of the top 10 banks uh, in the world. We work with nine of the top 10 telecom providers in the world, six of the top 10 healthcare providers, seven of the top 10 tech providers. So if we can solve the problems of the largest of the large, addressing the broader markets will be um, 
who is really our opportunity. So it sounds like it's going to be a very exciting 10 years. Yes. So we're here at the, last, at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center for our Disruptor Series with Tom Riley, the CEO of Cloudera. Tom, thanks so much for being with us. Thank Great. you, Bruce. Really you. enjoyed thanks it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.